Here is my outkick national top 10 in reverse order. In the 10th spot, I've got Penn State. In the 9th spot, I've got Washington. As I continue, as I continue, always note this. I don't start off with a preseason ranking and then spend the rest of the year trying to justify what I thought I was going to see before the season started. In other words, I start off fresh, brand new, no pre-existing uh, idea of what's going to happen and then I judge only based on the field. So in the 10th spot, I got Penn State. In the 9th spot, I've got the Washington Huskies. 8th overall, I've got West Virginia. I don't know how good West Virginia is. I will tell you this. For everybody out there who played our, our parlay, how much did it suck for our parlay to get blown up based on a touchdown with Texas Tech with 38 seconds to go? And also for a pick six to happen, we were sitting really pretty on the under hitting in Texas Tech, West Virginia. Our four game parlay would have hit with ease if they just hadn't thrown a pick six. The clock was ticking. West Virginia was in great shape. They were going to be able to run out the clock. That was a brutal beat. Seventh spot, I've got Auburn. Auburn was not very good this week. I can't figure out the Tigers. They're pretty good defensively. I can't figure out why their offense hasn't gotten on in gear yet. In the sixth spot, I've got the Oklahoma Sooners. In the five spot, Ohio State. And this is where people get triggered. Ohio State versus Notre Dame. I've got Notre Dame four. Here's why I have Notre Dame four. I think the combo of Notre Dame wins over Michigan and over Stanford is better than the combo of Ohio State wins over TCU and over Penn State. I believe that Stanford and Michigan is a better combo right now than I do TCU and Penn State. Plus, uh, Notre Dame with Ian Book dominated Stanford on Saturday. Let's be honest. Ohio State was very, very, very fortunate to win that game. Maybe they shouldn't have won the game. I think for most people who watched it, Penn State was the better team for most of that game. So that's the, it's the only perspective I would put in there. Obviously, there's still much to be played. In the three spot, I have got LSU. At two, I've got Georgia. At one, I've got Alabama. Most underrated team nationally right now that should be getting more attention than they are, Kentucky Wildcats. How many FBS teams that, are, that have a top 25 win have won every game by double digits so far this year? There's three. How many top 25 performances, top 25 teams that are undefeated have got at least every game that they've won by double digits? Alabama and Georgia are pretty easy. Third one, Kentucky Wildcats. Big five conferences with a top 25 win. Kentucky Wildcats, very underrated. And I'll give you an example. Clemson's not in my top 10. Clemson is not in my top 10. Why is Clemson not in my top 10? Because they haven't been very good. Because if Clemson were just starting this season and you looked at their resume, nobody could argue that Kentucky didn't deserve to be above Clemson based on what Kentucky has done so far this year. They've gone on the road and they've beaten Florida, who looks pretty good so far. They beat Mississippi State and they beat South Carolina to start 3-0 and in the SEC and get to 5-0 and overall. I think Kentucky deserves a lot more uh, so far than they have received. So that's my top 10. 